Hey everybody, Dylan here from Iceberg TV. Today we are going to try to throw like Simon Lazar. I'm sure a lot of you guys, because the video has 650,000 views, have seen the Eagle McMahon and Simon Lazar distance clinic that they did when Simon, I think, was about 25, and then Eagle still has his baby voice. So this video is practically ancient history at this point. But I'll show a few clips from that video, and then we're gonna take some of Simon Lazat's coaching cues and give them a try today. I've actually been out trying them for probably an hour now, just out here throwing max distance shots, throwing as hard as I can, um, trying to use Simon Lazat's distance techniques to benefit my own game. The first thing we're gonna talk about is Simon explained this really well, and it's going to be the footwork of the max distance shot. Is that I see a lot of players who struggle with distance that their last step is in a very straight line to the target. What gives you more power, more drive, is when your last step, me being a righty, goes like a foot or a foot and a half out in front of you to the left. For lefties, of course, other way. So if you will watch me throw, I'll run up straight and my last step goes way out here and then I drive like across my body. Every player who throws 450, 500 plus does that. Don't plant straight to slight angle to, to your, to in front of you. So we're gonna zoom out a little bit so you guys can actually see my feet. What I find myself doing, this is something that, it's just a really bad habit that most people do that you should probably never do. It's when you're throwing and you step directly towards your target. And this is something that Simon says is basically an absolute no-no. Your last step on your backhand should pretty much be, he said, between a foot and a foot and a half, more of a forward step. And this is something Joel Freeman has a drill for called the window drill. So this is something that Joel Freeman does, he throws far. This is something that Simon does, he throws far. Basically everybody that throw far, that last step is somewhat in that forward direction. Now, the second thing that Simon said that really resonated with me from this clinic was finding the power pocket. And I really struggled to keep my wrist curled in this position and get a really tight power pocket. This is something that I do not do very well. And I think it's something that's really gatekeeping me from hitting those elite distance numbers. Rubber band arm. You, my English. Um, it's tough to be in Germany for eight months and then speak English. <laughs> you want your arm curled and then straight and then curled and then straight. Slingshot. That's where you get the snap, the pop. That's what makes it look effortless, is the elbow joint. If you reach around, see my arm's already straight. You lose the momentum you gain from the slingshot rubber band effect. So keep it close. Um, I figured out a way to make it work for me, so I'm going to share that with you guys. But what Simon said was that you basically, you don't want to let your elbow go down because that causes you to swoop the disc. That was another thing he said that was really important. Um, that's something I also do. So we're going to be really strict. I'm going to try and keep this elbow up high. I'm going to keep my wrist curled step forward and just keep that wrist curled the whole time until the disc leaves my hand. Um, being in that forward stepped position gives you quite a bit more room um, to not hit yourself in the body. I feel like a lot of people who do the straight step, I see them hit themselves in the chest and then have like the worst throw of all time. So we're gonna do the Simon Lazat forward step and the Simon Lazat super curl. Um, Simon Lazat kind of goes straight curls and releases that is not something that's going to happen intuitively for me so i'm going to have the disc curled the entire time even in this position curled and then we're going to pull through in the curl try and hit that power pocket and explode through with the elbow let's give it a go if the disc goes nose up like that it means i've swooped so it is imperative that i do not swoop but that is a horrible habit that I have, that I'm sure a lot of you guys have. I need to just keep this elbow up. I don't know why I swoop or I kind of drop my shoulder, but it's something that I would only know that I do if I film myself. So I think when you guys try this, you should definitely film yourself as well. All right, come on, elbow up. That's so much better. Oh.
But to get better and improve, you, you first must make some mistakes along the way. Got to put in the effort here. Oh, that's the shot shape. That, that got all the way to that basket, which is like 460 feet away. We finally got a good one going. We're going to have to go gather everything up and throw them back one more time. That was finally it right there. That was the one. So we're right up by the basket here. This is at least 15 to 20 feet past the flag. There's definitely something to this because I, I think this has to be one of my farthest backhand shots of all time. All right, so I've thrown a lot of shots. I do not want to hurt myself. So this is going to be my last set of shots here. After that one shot with the bolt, I do still see hope that this is going to work for me. Keeping the wrist curled and finding this power pocket and then keeping the nose down is so hard to do. Like this is like to have pro form. I feel like these are all mandatory things. And it's just so hard to break the bad habits of not doing this right. Come on, don't hit it. Let me see that thing go all the way. We hit a branch. That is so far. There's definitely something to it, but it's really hard for me to control. It's the fission photon. I'm getting the hang of the release now. We're absolutely smacking these shots. From that last set to this set, I'm feeling still uncomfortable, but seeing massive improvements. All right, we got some destroyers, a wraith, a bolt, and an Excal. <sighs> oh, let's see, that's what happens. The timing gets wrong. You just launch it into the moon. Let's throw the Excal, then we have a PFN wraith, a PFN destroyer, and then the bolt. The only other tip that resonated with me from Simon Lazat's clinic that he gave to all those people seven years ago was that, again, that forward step, the curl super tight into the power pocket with a massive emphasis on using your elbow. Um, the only other thing that resonated with me was Simon, he said, you have to get your off arm out of the way. He said he doesn't care where this off arm is as long as it's out of the way. But he said, as long, as long as you can use it to open up your shoulders and then get it close to the body to close the shoulders, that's going to be the best way to get the most distance. Um, but I do think the off arm, when it comes to what we're working on today, is the least important part of the equation. So I'm really just trying to focus on the stuff that's super unnatural to me, and I have no idea what my off arm is doing. I'll be totally honest. We got three shots left. I, I need to see something like... 420, 430 to feel like today's been a success. <sighs> Come on, this destroyer is the chosen one, I think. <sighs> no. Wait, that might've been the farthest shot I've ever thrown and it still hit the trees. We got, we're gonna have to measure that destroyer. All right, last throw with the bolt. I'm gonna hit the left side of the fairway and try not to overturn it. <laughs> Overturned it. See you later, bolt. <sighs> Thing is so flippy. <sighs> Man, these are, these are really challenging things to work on. But I feel like if you want to have elite distance, these are things that you just have to work out on your own. You have to go in put in hundreds, maybe thousands of reps to get it right. I'm feeling myself get it once in a while. I'm excited to watch these videos in slow motion when I'm editing, but I definitely feel when I hit that power pocket, I think I need to plant better so I don't like over rotate. I'm like rotating a little too soon and I don't know if it's rounding or if my plant sucks, but something's causing me also to just rip one way to the right every once in a while, so. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to, let's go gather everything up and I'll close this out for you guys today. 
So this destroyer snuck through the trees and hit this bush, but it definitely went well beyond this tee box over here. So this went about 440, 450. I boosted a few others. There's the trail right there. Um, there's a couple other ones that were absolutely bomb, but there's definitely something to this, but I definitely need to continue to put in the work to get better at it. And there's that trail and there's the photon even farther than the trail. Some of the really bad ones are like really short of the end of the golf tee there. But the fact that I put one into this bush is new territory for me. And the fact that this photon went there was definitely a distance PB with the photon. It's like when you hit it right, it works. But when you mess it up, oh man, it's so terrible. All right, just to do a quick recap, we had the forward step on the last step going into your plant. I feel like this is really good advice. And I feel like that sort of opens your body up to a position where you can properly get into the power pocket, which leads us into the second most important point of the day is curling the arm, curling the disc, get the disc as close to your body in that curled position as possible. You wanna be like deep in that power pocket so you can then open up the elbow and release the disc. So you wanna get super curled and then boom, open up with the elbow. Um, definitely something I can need to continue to work on. I had a handful of throws today that were certainly distance personal bests with those particular discs, but I can feel my arm is sore. My tricep is sore. My forearm is sore from curling the disc so hard. Um, definitely some muscles need to get stronger to really optimize on this new form, posture and technique, but the human body is an incredible thing. And as I continue to work on this, I expect my body to get more comfortable in these new positions. And that's when I really expect to start seeing massive distance gains is when not only do you, you have to learn to get in the proper positions, but then we need to continue to train and retrain them to get fully comfortable within the new positions to really maximize on what they're capable of with consistency. That is the important part. So we can essentially go out, get more birdies and score better out on the course. Anyway, let me know if you guys like videos like this. I'll continue to bust out more content like this, but I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Stay humble, live with gratitude. I'll see you guys in the next video and take care.